Hello, this is William from Visual Components, and I'm going to show you how to loop a robot program. That is, run the program over and over again during a simulation. To get started, in the 3D world I have a layout open, and you can find a link to in the video description. So open that layout in the 3D world. I'll now go to the Program tab. Use the jog command to select the robot in the 3D world. In the Program Editor panel, you can see the program of the robot. We have a main routine that calls two subroutines to pick a box and place a box. Run the simulation and you'll see the robot wait for input, pick the box and place it, and that's it. So the robot program has finished, the simulation is stopped. If we continue to run the simulation, notice the robot is not doing anything because it finished its program. So how can we tell the robot to loop that program to pick and place a box over and over again? Well, one way to do that is to select the robot as a component, go to the Component Properties panel, and find this tab called Executor, and notice that there's a property called Is Looping, which by default is false, meaning the program run by the executor is done one time. If you set Is Looping to true, the executor will run the program over and over again. So if we run the simulation, the robot should pick and place a box, loop back, and run the same program again. And there you go. Let's reset. And if you go to the simulation settings, notice you have an option called repeat. Now this is repeating the simulation. It is not looping the robot program. So if I select repeat and turn off is looping in the executor, run the simulation. Remember that the robot program will be executed. And once it's done, the simulation stops, which also will reset the simulation and then repeat. And that's what's happening here. So the robot program is only being executed one time, and then the simulation is repeating itself. So if we reset and turn is looping on, since we're looping the robot program, the robot program is never stopping the simulation. So you can see here, the simulation is not resetting and repeating itself because the robot program is never ending. It's just looping. So try not to get confused when repeating a simulation and looping a robot program. So let's turn repeat off and turn is looping off. Another way to loop a robot program is to create a loop inside the program using a while statement. If we go to the program editor panel, in our main routine you can see I'm executing these three statements. Let's now add a while statement and add these three statements inside that while loop. So I'll just drag and drop them on the while statement and now they're inside it. By default, a while statement has a true condition. So the condition for executing this loop is always true. So if I run the simulation, the program itself is not looping, but there is a loop inside the program. So the program never ends because of that loop. And that's why the robot is picking and placing boxes over and over again. Even though if we select the robot as a component, you can see is looping is turned off. Let's reset. And your next question is probably, how can we exit or break out of this loop? Well, whenever the condition for executing the loop is false, the while statement is then finished. So we can test this by adding a print statement after the while loop. Let's then give ourselves a message. So exited while loop. And select the while statement. And then in the statement properties panel, you write an expression that returns either a true or false value. So if your expression returns a true value, the loop is executed. If it's false, the loop is not executed and the statement ends. So here I can pass a constant of false, run the simulation, and you can see the robot does nothing. It's not going to pick or place a box because the condition for picking and placing the box was false. So now the robot program has ended and printed feedback in our output panel. When running your expression, you have a couple options. So you can reference the inputs of a robot. So for example, if you're getting signals from another component, you can do that by writing a capital IN, square brackets, and then the port number. So I think for, it's from 0 to 4096 in this robot. So you could say if input 105 is equal to false. So as long as the input of 105 is false, execute the loop. Another way to write this is it's not equal to true. For your expression, you can also make additional conditions. So you can use pipes to make an or. So either this condition or the next condition is true. So we can say input 101 is equal to false. 
So either of these need to be true. For an AND, you can use two ampersands. So now both of these have to be true in order to execute the loop. For your expression, you can also reference component properties in the robot. So if they're a default property, you can type them by name. So if we select the robot as a component. Talking about these properties here, so we could say if J1 is less than 90, that's one way you could write it. So as long as that first joint in the robot is less than 90, execute the loop. For other properties in the robot, if it's in one of these tabs, you have to reference the tab name first, followed by two colons, and then the property name. So we could say if workspace envelope is turned on, then execute the loop. So we could say workspace colon colon envelope, and let's actually say if it's not true. So as long as this property is not active, we can execute the loop. And I think this will work. We can see feedback in the program editor panel that yes, the program is still being executed, so we're in that loop. But now let's select our robot and turn envelope on. And now we broke out of the loop and the program is finished. So that's one way to do it. Another way to write your expression is to use routine variables. So a routine in a robot program can have its own variable. So if I select the main routine here, you can see you have options to add a Boolean variable, integer, real number, or string. So if we add an integer variable here, let's rename it to be counter. And notice by default its value is zero. We can now reference this variable in the condition for our while statement as long as they're in the same routine because routine variables are global in the routine but they can't be used in other routines in the robot program. So we can say as long as counter is less than three, execute the loop. But we have an issue here. If we don't change the value of our counter variable, then we're stuck in this loop. So what we can do is add an assign variable statement to the end of a loop, which I did here. Our target property, we can reference the routine variable by name. And for our value expression, we have to write an expression to set the value of our property. So we can reference the variable by name to get its current value and add one to it. For the target property here, it's like I showed you before, you can reference the component property by name if it's in a tab. Memory reference the tab name, colon, colon, and the property name. And then we have this expression here. So if we select our main routine, right now the value is zero of the counter. But if we run the simulation, we can now see the robot program execute and the value of our counter go up every time it picks and places a box. It's at two, and now it's at three, so the condition for executing our while statement here, this loop, is now false, so the statement is over, and now we printed our message, and the robot program is finished. So remember, we're not looping the robot program, which is why when I continue to run the simulation, the robot is not doing anything. But one thing I do want to show you when using these routine variables is an issue you may encounter when you have loops in your main routine in the robot program and you're looping that program. So if we set is looping back to true, I'm going to show you what I'm talking about here. So now the robot should pick and place three boxes, but eventually we're stuck. <laughs> you can see the simulation is kind of in a standstill now, and we have this kind of endless loop now in our program. So if I stop the simulation, select the main routine, you can see that our counter variable, because we were looping the robot program, it never reset back to zero. So it's at three, which makes our while statement false. So the robot program is just, you know, keeps on looping back and forth, back and forth, not really doing anything. So how do you think we can fix that? Well, one way is to add an assign variable statement at the very end of the main routine, or after the while loop, that sets the value of our counter variable back to zero. So now, if we run the simulation, what do you think will happen? Because we're looping the entire robot program, but before we end the program, we're setting the value of our counter variable to zero, which, of course, makes the condition for our while loop true. And that's what's happening. So reset and go back to our main routine. Now, one thing I do want to mention before we end the video is that if you have a while statement 
in another subroutine other than the main routine, every time you call that subroutine, those routine variables will be reset to their initial value. To give you an example, I'm going to copy and paste the main routine and now rename that copy to be pick place box. Notice when you copy a routine in the robot program, you're also copying the routine variables. So this pick place box subroutine or sequence now has its own counter variable. And here in this subroutine, we don't need this statement anymore that resets, that sets the value of counter back to zero. Because if I go to my main routine now, and let's delete the while statement here. Notice when you delete a while statement that has its own scope of statements, you're deleting those as well. Let's now delete these and this. And now we're just going to call our pick place box subroutine in the main routine. And what do you think will happen? Well, when we run the robot program, it will call this sequence here, pick place box. When the routine is called, it will, its variables will be initialized and set to the value of what we have here. So counter will be at zero. This loop will be executed, and every time we pick and place a box, the counter variable will go up by one. Eventually, the condition for executing the loop is false, so then we're going to print feedback and go back to the routine that called this subroutine here, which in our case is the main routine. And then the robot program will just loop again. So now if we run the simulation, do we get that same issue we had before where we're kind of just stuck, the loop is not executing? No. Because every time we call that subroutine, its routine variables are reset back to their initial value. So in this case, we don't have to add an assign statement at the end of our loop here in the pick place box subroutine. Because if we select it here, notice the counter variable is at zero, run the simulation, and just pay close attention to the value. It'll go up by one every time we pick and place a box, but eventually the robot program will loop, so then the counter variable goes back to zero. And that's what I was trying to explain. Hopefully you got the point. And remember, if we select the robot as a component, turn is looping off, this robot program will only be executed once. So our main routine will run, call pick place box, and then it will end. So one box, two box, three box, and that's it. So if you continue to run the simulation, that's all the robot was told to do. I will reset the simulation real quick and just mention that if you need help with writing expressions for a while statement, what you can do is go to the help tab here, open the help file, and in the help file there's a section called reference guide, and there's this another subsection called expression. So here you can find information about what functions you can use to write the expression, how you can group things, how the operators in your expression are executed, how you can convert values to different types, and also specify units when passing values. For the while statement, there's a section called robot statements here. So if we select the while statement topic, for its condition property, you have more information here about what I mentioned. So when you want to reference an input port in the robot, use this syntax for a component property, reference it by name, or sometimes you have to reference the tab name, colon, colon, and the property name. Okay, this completes the video. If you have any more questions, please feel free to visit our forum at forum.visualcomponents.com, and I hope you have a wonderful day.